Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we will start an important topic. Uh, this is the notion of modules. It is a unifying notion. Uh, it captures many different things that uh, we have seen under one single umbrella. So, let me give you the definition first. So, what is a module? So, to define a module, what you need is a ring. So, here is the definition. Let R be a ring. So, not necessarily commutative, uh, a left R module So, uh, remember we have encountered this notion of left and right ideals before. So, when a ring is not commutative, one often has to distinguish between these two notions. So, in this case, we will call this a left R module that is what I am going to define is the following is an abelian group first, it is an abelian group So, let me call it M and let us denote the group operation by plus, so it is commutative together with a map okay, So, this map is from R cross M to M Okay, so, we write given an element alpha in R and X in M. Let us denote the image of this uh, map by alpha dot X okay. satisfying the following axioms. So, satisfying the following axioms. Okay, axiom number 1 says when I take alpha and combine it with x plus y alpha dot x plus y is the same as alpha dot x plus alpha dot y and this holds for all alpha in R and for all x and y coming from M it is property 1. Property 2 says uh, if I look at two elements of the ring alpha and beta then alpha plus beta dot x is the same as for all x and m. So, these are sorts of uh, some sort of distributive uh, properties. Property 3 says if I multiply two elements alpha and beta of the ring, so their product is again an element of the ring, uh, I multiply them and then act on x, then this is the same as alpha dot beta dot x, this is for all alpha beta in the ring R and for all x coming from m. And finally, property 4 is the identity. If I take the identity element, the multiplicative identity of the ring and uh, look at that dot x, then the answer is x and this is true for all x in n. Okay? So, those are the 4 axioms which this map R cross M to M is supposed to satisfy. Okay? Now, uh, this set R, uh, the elements of R. So, let me just say this is supposed to remind you of something that you must have seen before. So, elements of R are uh, sometimes called scalars. Okay? And this map from R cross M to M is sometimes called scalar multiplication. Okay? So, of course, that should uh, ring a bell. So, observe that this is in fact uh, exactly it looks a lot like the definition of a vector space and in fact that will be our, our first uh, uh, example. So, immediately one observes that this definition is really motivated from the definition of a vector space. Okay? So, example let us take R to be a field, uh, a field 
So now let me call it K. So K could be the field of real numbers, complex numbers, finite fields, uh, whatever. So I take a field K and let M now denote a vector space over this field. Okay. Okay. Then observe that these axioms are exactly uh, what it means for M to be uh, to be a vector space. Okay. So then observe M is an R module. So the axioms of a module are exactly the axioms of a vector space when R is, is a field. Okay. So that is our, our primary uh, example. Uh, now here is a small remark. So I defined left modules instead of right modules. Uh, so let me also tell you how you would uh, define a right module. So a right module, a right R module M is again an abelian group. Okay, so let us say with a plus operation satisfying well almost the same axioms as before. So axioms 1, 2, uh, 4 but not 3 and instead of 3 they have an axiom which is now called 3, uh, 3 prime. So let us just go back and look at what axiom 3 said. Alpha beta uh, acting on x or dot x the scalar multiplication should be alpha dot beta dot x. Now uh, 3 dash is the following if you take the product of two scalars alpha and beta and act it on x then I demand that the answer should be beta acting on alpha dot x. Okay, so this is what it, it means for a module to be a right module rather than a left module that the, the sort of the, uh, the order of alpha and beta is, is interchanged. Okay. Now observe that if the ring is commutative, so if R is a commutative ring, then well these two notions are really, really the same if R is commutative then observe that uh, the notions of left and right modules coincide. Okay. In other words a left module over R would also would automatically be a right module and a right module would, would automatically be a left module. Okay, that, that map R cross M to M actually satisfies both 3 and 3 dash if R is a commutative ring. Okay, that is what we mean. In other words, the map from R cross M to M uh, satisfies the axiom 3 if and only if it satisfies the axiom 3 dash. Okay, and you can you can check this quickly. All you have to do is just take instead of alpha beta here, I, I can uh, replace alpha beta by the product beta alpha. It's the same thing because R is commutative, and then observe that axiom three dash would just reduce to axiom three. Okay, so write out a formal proof of of this fact. Okay, so so far we have defined the notion of a module and realized that it's actually nothing but a vector space in disguise. You can sometimes say a module is like a vector space over an arbitrary ring rather than over a field. Okay. Okay. Now a field, remember, is a very special kind of a ring. A field has two important properties. Number one, uh, uh, it's a commutative ring. Okay. Commutative ring. And the second important property is that all non-zero elements have multiplicative inverses all non-zero elements have multiplicative inverses, right. So these are the two important properties that a field possesses. A general ring of course does not have either of these properties. A typical ring can be non-commutative and even if it is commutative, no reason for it to have uh, inverses, right. So you have already seen many examples of rings of both kinds. So of course the, the theory of modules over an arbitrary ring is uh, is much richer okay so the ring doesn't necessarily have to have these these special properties 
and so the the class of examples the the kinds of properties you get and so on uh, everything is now is now a much richer setting okay so let's look at uh, the first example of a module uh, which is not over a field okay in other words let's look for a module which is not a vector space uh, so here's example or a non field let's take r to be the ring of integers okay so let's ask what is a module over the ring of integers mean well if i take so let m be a z module let m be a z module so let's try and see what that means okay so first property recall that means that m is an abelian group it's got an addition operation and with respect to that it is an abelian group and uh, the second part of the definition said that there should exist a map so there exists a map from z cross m to m this is the scalar multiplication map if you will which is if i take a pair n comma x maps it to what we call n dot x this is the scalar multiplication of x by the integer n so n is in okay satisfying various axioms right so let's look at uh, such that certain axioms hold 1 through 4 hold okay now these axioms actually impose rather severe restrictions on what this map can actually be okay for example let's look at axiom 4 so here's axiom 4 which says if I take the multiplicative identity of my ring, which in this case is the number 1, and I scalar multiply it with any element x, then I should get x. Okay. So I know this already by axiom 4 that 1 dot x is x. Okay. Now uh, we can quickly find out many other things from this. Uh, let's look at 0 dot x. Okay. What do you get if you multiply x by a 0? Uh, in fact, this is true in, in arbitrary modules. So what is this? Well, uh, as always, this is, so you must have seen this calculation uh, many times also in previous courses. If I try to uh, compute 0 dot x, I can write it as 0 plus 0 dot x and then use uh, the second axiom, axiom 2, which is sort of a distributivity axiom, which says this is nothing but 0 dot x plus 0 dot x. So 0 dot x is the same as 0 dot x plus 0 dot x in the module m. And of course, the module M is an abelian group. So I conclude. So this is what I conclude. And of course, in this abelian group, I can cancel these two elements. In other words, I can add the inverse of this to both sides and thereby conclude that 0 dot x must just be the element 0 of my abelian group. M. Okay. So I, f I found out two things already just from the axioms. 1 dot x is x, 0 dot x is 0. And uh, let's look at a few other ones let's ask what is minus 1 dot x so what is minus 1 dot x so observe uh, so what is minus 1 really so 0 dot x is 0 but I can also write 0 dot x as right so 0 is just nothing but what I get when I add 1 with minus 1 and now again I use my axiom 2 this says this is 1 dot x plus minus 1 dot x okay now of course I have already concluded that 1 dot x is x so here is my conclusion that x plus minus 1 dot x is just the element 0 of my abelian group so this is what I conclude finally okay so this holds so all this is now an equation in m remember both sides of this equation are elements of my abelian group n okay so what does this mean it just means that this element which i am trying to find minus 1 into x minus 1 dot x so here's my conclusion minus 1 dot x is therefore the additive inverse of x in other words that's the element minus x okay so this is just the additive inverse of x Okay, so I have concluded that minus 1 times um, x is just the element minus x. Now one can sort of keep going, you can already imagine where this is heading. 
So I can compute say 2 plus x, it's just 1 plus 1 dot x. So 2 plus x is nothing but 1 dot x plus 1 dot x. So it's just what I get when I add x with itself twice. More generally, if I try to take a positive number n and try to, so I have to use distributivity repeatedly, but you can check that this is what I get. It's just x plus x plus x n times. Okay, so this is if n is a positive integer and from here I can also figure out what I get when I multiply by a negative number. So this for example, so here is a quick way to do this. So I can think of n as uh, minus n as just minus 1 times n. Uh, so this is just the usual multiplication in the integers, this is just minus 1 into n, the product, the scalar multiplication with x. And this by axiom 3 is just minus 1 acting on n dot x and of course we have already said n dot x is nothing but the element x plus x plus x n times. Okay. So this is the element in m and now we have already done this. right? If I take any element of my module and I scale and multiply it with minus 1, it just gives me the additive inverse of that element. So this is just minus of the, so it is the additive inverse of x plus x plus x n times. Okay. So what does that mean? What have we managed to do so far? Just starting with the axioms, okay? we never used anything more. We have figured out that there is really only one possible map that you can define which satisfies these axioms. Okay? The map z cross m to m is almost forced in some sense. Right? n dot x I have figured out has the has to be one of these if if uh, n is a positive number then n dot x is just uh, add x with itself n times if n is a or instead of n i take minus n a negative number then that answer is just minus of x added with itself n times okay so this this is sort of this just tells you that this is all forced in some sense it's forced by the axioms so uh, so let us sort of forget this, this bit of the calculation and maybe just go ahead and define uh, given any abelian group, you can make it into a, into a z module as follows. So that is the really the conclusion here, given an abelian group M, it can be made into a z module. via the definition n dot x is just either x plus x plus x um, n times this is if n is positive or it is minus of this if n is negative. Okay, now this has to be mod n times. or if n is 0 then of course the answer is 0. Okay. So you have to check, so now I am giving you a definition, take any, any abelian group and you define the scalar multiplication by z in this manner, then this becomes a z module. Okay. It is a check that it satisfies all the axioms, okay. exercise, check axioms 1 through 4. And sort of conversely, what we what we just showed is that uh, if I have a z module, then in a sense that z module is more or less the same data as an abelian group. Okay, I don't get anything extra there. The map. Uh, so if I have a module over z, of course I have an abelian group. But conceivably, I could define some scalar, some strain scalar multiplication map. I, maybe I, there are many different ways of defining scalar multiplication by z, right? But what we have just shown is that no, that is not possible. There is only one scalar multiplication map that you can define which satisfies all the axioms that you need to satisfy. Okay? So in a sense, it says that uh, talking about a z module is the same as you know the data of a z module is really the same as the data of an abelian group it there is no extra data there okay so these two notions are actually identical okay 
So, what we have just shown is that Z modules are really the same. So, it is a slightly loose statement because what same means is, is in, the, in the sense of our discussion Z modules are the same as abelian groups. Okay, in other words, given, given a Z module, I can look at the underlying abelian group and given any abelian group, I can make it into a Z module in, in this manner. Okay. So, that is sort of our first, uh, first um, example of a module which is not a vector space. Okay. So, uh, next time we will look at another example which is slightly more uh, non-trivial than this one. Mm -hmm.